and welcome to this second episode in my little series on problem solving. In this episode, I'll be focusing on the key tools that we use for doing spatial problem solving, namely the OLA tools and the buffer tools. If um, we look at those that we generally call OLA tools, they are identical to what we in math would call set operations. And a matter of fact, all of these illustrations that I have been using, I have lifted off of uh, Wikipedia, so credits to them. And um, the thing is that we have these different sets, but of course, when we use them in a GIS term, we have, you know, what is, how should we think about this? So basically this, so this is set A, that's set B, and, um, they could be in the GIS term, two different layers. So the difference is, so that's a part of set A that is not part of set B. That will typically be used to say, fine, okay, this is something good. Let's say it, this is an area around a park and this is an area around a noisy factory plant. So we want to live close to the park, but not close to the factory plant. So. In that case, we'll be using the difference tool. If uh, I just minimize me a wee bit, we can in QGIS see that all of these tools will be in the processing toolbox. And these tools are available under the vector overlay group here. If um, you don't know where they are, you can just start typing it. So, when you start typing the name or a word that is in the help file of the tool, it will locate the tool. So in this case, I can have the difference tool here. Um, so there is a difference and basically they all have this. So this is set A, that's set B. Um, it also is, you have to read the text over here because here it says that this algorithm extracts feature from the input. So this is the input that fall outside or overlap the input, the overlay. So that's the overlay. So read the text if you don't know what of the layers is what. For many of these tools, there is a variant of them that are called multiple. So this is a multiple difference. So here we have our input layer. Then we have a series of outputs. So we will be extracting from a series of different ones. So they function a wee bit different. So you choose the input as you did before, but then you can go down under here and then you can tick off all of those layers you want to function as your different. So we will say here that this algorithm extracts from the input layer that for outside only part contains these overlay ones. So there will be all of these. So that is really the same as putting all of those together and then doing a difference on it. So you can always, you, you never need, strictly speaking, these multiple, you can always avoid them by combining layers two by two. But it's, they are basically just shortcuts for doing it a wee bit quicker. So they are not necessary, but they are nice to have. If um, we um, look at the next one, we have our union tool. So our union tool is one that we use if we have a series of conditions. So it, we want to fulfill or oh, be nice to have. So for instance, if we had this could be close to a park and this could be, could be close to the coast and it would be nice to live either close to the park or close to the coast. Doesn't really matter which. So that's the union. So mathematically say all elements from the two sets will be included in the union. From the GIS point of view, we will um, have, if we think, typically think of as a way of combining nice places. Um, combining alternatives. So you could also think of this as the or in SQL when you do filtering or something like that. It is 
A or B, which in spatial, when we're talking about the area of them and not the attributes, we call it the union. And again, that, that would be just down under the vector overlay, and there's a union, and there's a multiple, and same, same, um, as well, the difference. So no reason to, to look at specifically at that tool. We have the intersection, which is, if this was the or, this or that, then this can be seen as the and. So it's only those that are both in set A and in set B. If set A was a layer with as close to a park, set B was an area or layer with as close to the coast, then this one is, hey, what are the really, really nice places? Namely, those that are both close to the park and close to the coast. So that is a tool that combines as an and both it, you can the result will only be those areas that are in both your layers and um, you can see that just like before there was a single and the multi um, just like we had with, with the all the other ones finally we have the symmetric difference um, so this one uh, is typically used, let's say, in negative situations. So you can't have both situations. Um, so if this was the park and this was the coast, you can't live both close to the park and the coast. But as I said, typically more used in negative. So you say, this is a sandy, if you are looking at agriculture, I say, okay, this is sandy soil and this is the area of a low rainfall. And um, it's okay with sandy soils as long as you have lots of rain. And it's okay with a low amount of precipitation, rain, if you uh, have anything else than sandy soils. So it can be used in this type of situation where okay, two bad things, that is too much, but we can handle one of them. There is um, one thing you should be aware about, that is that these for these three last ones here, that when you do the combination, you're also combining the attribute tables. So you will get all of the attributes from the park layer and from the coast layer. So, and sometimes that's not necessary. So specifically on the intersection, it's common that you uh, say, okay, we're just using it as a um, as finding this part of A that is inside B, and therefore we are often not really interested in B attributes, and therefore if that's the case, it, these have a little evil cousin called clip. So if um, we look here, we have the clip tool, which spatially does. You can't if you just look at the layer. You can't see a difference between the intersection and the clip layer. But if you look at the attribute data, you will see that the intersection will contain attributes from both layers. And that is sometimes useful, necessary. While the clip will only contain the attributes of the input layer. So that is a wee bit different there. So if we look at the Buffer tool is really, it's one of those tools that, oh, it's just a buffer tool, but it's really a, um, and it looks simple, but it is really a, a, a complex tool that does lots of strange things. So I recommend that after you watch this video series, I have a, another set of videos on specifically the buffer tool and some of those very nifty small things that is about the buffer tool. Here, I'll just take the main um, concepts of the buffer tool. So, first of all, there is um, a standard version that we'll call the dilation. Um, so, that's what we normally think about when we talk about a buffer tool. So, it expands area. If we, in QGIS, 
look at it, we can see if these lakes are my objects that I'm going to look at. And the standard buffer is just doing a outer buffer on it, if you wish. So um, if we in our buffer tool specify a positive value, it will expand out. Note here that there are some special things that in this case I have this there's a little tick box that says this solve. So when layers overlap, they are merged together. So these three lakes are merged together and same with these lakes here. So that is that's one of those special things that you should check out in, in the buffer videos. So that's a standard. If you just do a buffer tool with the dissolve, that is what you'll get, and you have a positive number. There's the opposite one, which is the erosion, which is a negative buffer size. So if you specify instead of plus one kilometer, specify minus one kilometer, then you'll get an erosion. So in that case, that is, um, so that was our illusion. That then our, we have our erosion, which is so inside our power tool. Note that both, or perhaps most specifically for dilation version here, that it also includes the lake. So often you might say, okay, I, it, I want to find as close to a lake and you just use the standard dilation version. So there's a positive buffer size. And then you can also live in the lake. And that is often not the case. So there are some variants of these standards. So these are just taking the buffer tool in QGIS. So in QGIS, just use the buffer tool and give a negative or positive value. The variance is the fringe. So the fringe is what you would think of at say the close to. So basically you will have to use first the buffer tool as a dilation. So we're positive buffer and then use a difference of the original object you are buffering. So in this case, I would take the dilation difference and then run the difference tool with the original one. So in that case, I will get the fringe data set, which is, you can see just the outside, but not, so this red hatch here, so it's not inside the lake. It's just outside, only outside. So fringe or outer edge is something you'd use, or you get by using two tools. First do a dilation, so a buffer with a positive number, and then do a difference on the original, so in this case, the lakes, and then that will give you the fringe or outer, and that is often what you want to find something that is close to a lake. Typically, you don't want to be in the lake in that case. The other version, is the margin or the inner edge. So that is typically when working, you don't want, if you um, don't want to live at the edge of the town, you want to only live in the core of the town. Or if you are looking at, just finding a better example, looking at forestry and on this margin between forest and its neighboring fields or whatever, there is something different. There are some different species in the margin of the forest than there is in the core of the forest. So in that case, if you want that part, so in this, that will be, if we look at our tool here, get rid of that one. So that is just on the inside of the original lake. So it's part of that, that was original lake, I just used because this is Sweden, I made a yellow hatch on the blue background. Um, so the margin or the inner edge, and you get that by taking your, again using a difference, but this time using the original one and then a difference on your erosion. So you do an erosion to get 
as I did before. So this was the erosion. And then if I do a difference on the lake and the erosion, I then get this margin um, or inner edge. So although um, and there are basically just one tool and you can give it a positive net or a negative value, but often you are not interested in just that simple version. Sometimes you want just the fringe, so the outer edge, or you want the margin, the inner edge. So the buffer tool is really, a, you know, when we talk about the buffer tool, that's one of those things that is often not considered as advanced as it really is. And I would really recommend watching some of the videos on that. So that was all for this episode on my problem solving series on the key tools. So I talked about the OLA tools or the set to tools of the union and the intersect and the difference. And then I talked about the different variants of the buffer tool. So the standard version with the dilation and, and if you give a negative size of buffer, you get the erosion and then how to calculate the fringe and the margin. And I said before, check out those specific videos on the buffer tool if you really want to get to grips with how it works. So hope you like the video. Hope to see you in our ones.